Hey everybody, this is Pete, and in this video I want to demonstrate a potential solution for a somewhat vexing problem that I've run into with customers involving model states and vault. So model states have made some processes much better, much easier, but they've also added a little bit of a wrinkle into the design. So here's just a, a simple wall segment, been working a lot with industrialized construction as of late for maybe some sort of a panel we're going to stick into a building. There's no drywall on it or anything, but you can see that I've got a head plate, a sill plate, and I've got several studs here, including some with holes. So it's the same lumber piece that I'm using, but I'm just using different model states within it. For example, I can look at the model state for oops, the header. There we go. So this is the head plate, and you can see that I've got different model states to pull from. So this is all well and good. It's very efficient. It's great to reuse the same part and having the different states, especially when the component doesn't have very complicated model states. But there's a problem in vault. So when we look at vault, here's that same assembly. And the challenge is, hey, I've got this one part, the dimension lumber, but when we look at the uses, it only has one entry. And it doesn't tell us which model state's active, even though there's one entry. All it shows are the primary properties. But if you look here, I actually have created a custom property that lists the part and the active model states that exists within it. So what I'm going to do is take a look at <clears throat> this design and inventor and <clears throat> demonstrate a methodology for pulling in the active model states and creating a property. So first things first, just to show you, uh, I don't have any of the I properties in here yet, but I'm going to create some custom I properties that cycle through the entire design and look to see which active model states are being used. But I'm only looking for certain model states. So for example, I'm not going to look for the primary model state. I'm not going to look for the setup model state. And if you're not familiar with what that is, you can take a look at my Autodesk University class in 2022. I talk about how a setup row could be useful. And I'm also not looking for anything that might designate as the final design. So if you had a sheet metal part with many iterative steps, I usually have a final model state that's typically called final design or complete design or something like that so that we know that's the one that people should be placing. But if any one of these other model states, like if it's a component that has lots of different versions, I want to be able to capture the active model state from that component. So what I've got here is some iLogic code I've written. And there's a couple different ways that I've done it. So I'm just going to walk through one <clears throat> to kind of show you how it works. So this is an external rule, meaning I can run it inside any document. So of course, I'm, I'm going through the document. I'm looking at all the occurrences. And I'm looking at creating a list of all the model states. <clears throat> and I want to capture the file name and the active model state. So as I cycle through here, I can find, <clears throat> hey, it's the primary or for every occurrence I'm looking, as long as it's not the primary, or if you're using 2022, the master, if it's not the setup, or like I said, it's not that final design, then what I'm going to do is I've got a little bit of logic here. I want to capture the file name, and I'm going to put into a string here the name of that document as well as its active model state. And then just checking through it, because I'm iterating through all the occurrences. If I have like 10 of the same part, I don't want to list it 10 times. So I check and see if my array already contains that model state ID. And if it does, forget it. But if it doesn't, then we're going to add it. So by cycling through, we can go ahead and capture all the unique model states. Because again, it's the same component but I could have used it with four different states in my design. 
And what I'm simply doing here next is I'm going to go through and <clears throat> I'm going to initially, because one of the methodologies I'm using here is I'm going to list every single model state as one I property. So it could have like 30 different uh, active model states in it. So I just want to build one property to capture all of that. And then I'll show you a second approach where we capture each one as a separate property. So I go ahead and just iterate through my array. And I've got some logger <clears throat> type info here if we want to just check things. And it just says, I'm going to grab this initial string equals that very first value. So I set it to be blank, but then I add in whatever is in my array. And then as it cycles in, it just continues to build on that list until it's got all of the values in the array in one string. So let's take a run at it. So I hit save and run, chugs through relatively quickly. We'll look at the I properties. And you can see it's built a custom I property where <clears throat> there's the lumber, there must be the sill plate. Here's one of the regular uh, studs, and then there's one with a hole. Oops, sorry, that's the one with the hole, and then there's one without the hole. So pretty cool. And it works if we make changes. So again, if I go back to this head plate, and let's say I do something goofy, and I make it a 2 by 8 <laughs> definitely noticeable. Well, I can run that rule again and go back here, and it, it should adjust because I cleared it out the first time. Now when we look at it, here's my 2 by 4 here's my 2 by 8 and then the studs with a hole and the studs without. So it should adjust. Now I've taken a second approach at it. <clears throat> where we can do it as an individual property. So I'm going to go really quickly through this. It's the same logic that I did before. All of it's the same, except when I get down here, I'm going to uh, create individual custom I properties for each unique model state. And <clears throat> I, to, to be careful about this now, if I had a state that went from like maybe 10 different unique ones, but then I made some changes and it drops to eight. I actually wanna make sure that I'm not leaving incorrect active model states in there. So I'm actually wiping out all of the custom I properties that contain that active component model state as part of the string. And then I'm going to rebuild them just like I did before, except it's gonna create a new I property for each row or each uh, individual model state. So if I run this, <laughs> because I wiped out everything, I'm actually gonna run the overall property list again because it also contains that string. But now when we look at the I properties, we, st we now see that I've got an individual list of each property or I'm sorry, an individual instance of each property, and I still have my list. So if you have tons of them, the list might be nice, but if you're worried about a character limit, we could also do it this way. So that's how this can work. I hit close, and then we'll check it into Vault. So I'll save it, check it into Vault, added the active model states, hit OK. This shouldn't take too long. And now let's take a look at the results in Vault. So as you saw before, <clears throat> here is the active component model states and it's listing the two by four, the two by eight. So that was different, that's a change. The uh, stud with the hole and the studs without. But what if I wanna add in that individual property. Well, what I can do is I can add in the property in the tools, administration, vault settings, go to the behaviors tab, and I can modify properties. So it would have been really great if I would have remembered <laughs> what how I spelled that, but we'll do our best here. So I'm going to say new, 
and I'll call this active component model state and then we'll say the, the first one. So we'll say underscore zero. So I just want to capture that first one. I have to associate it with something. We'll call it a file. Uh, hit close. And then we actually have to map that value. So I know it's going to be from a file, but what kind of file? So the provider is going to be an inventor document. And then which property? So I can import from a file, meaning I can look on my local workspace. Or because I've already checked it into the vault, I'm going to import it from the vault in this case. And then I have to find it within my vault structure. Here's that model I just checked in. I hit open. And up at the top, now I have all these properties available because I checked it in. So I'm going to grab the active component model state of zero. And you can also control the mapping like does it simply come from the file to vault does vault write it to the file can it be written both ways i'll just leave it and now we've got that property active so close out of that we could right click customize this view and we'll add that field in so i can say let's look at all of them there's model state zero we'll add it in and we'll move it right behind the list Hit OK. Oh, I'm so excited. This is going to be awesome. Boom. So <laughs> because we'd already checked this in and then created the property definition, we have to select this file, go to Actions, and we actually have to add the property to make it visible. So it's already mapped. Everything's good. We just have to add it to this particular file. Hit OK. And there you see it shows up. So model state zero is the two by four by, you know, this is still plate by 129 and a half. So that's how you can create some custom I properties using iLogic, capture the active model states. And then even though we can't see them in vault out of the box, this is a workaround to at least know which files are contained and you can start to search these properties as uh, uh, vault properties. So you can try to find if it contains this part. Awesome. We can find all of the designs that contain this 2x4x117 by by or something like that. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.